Hey everyone, it's Michelle here with the Beat Goes On podcast and we have my dear friend Avril on and she's the owner of JW Hair Salon. Um, she's so much more than that though. She comes in and gets spray tan at uh, Beat Tan and when she walks in, I immediately smile. Her presence is such a, I mean, she's just such a joyful person, but also <laughs> on top of that, we are very like-minded and we use our time together to usually empower or get vulnerable or... Yeah or hug or whatever, make the other feel better. And yeah. we vibe on that aspect so very hard. <laughs> so I thought I wanted her, I get so much out of having her around for the little bit of time. It only takes about 15 minutes right. to get spray tan, so it's usually <laughs> little bitty bitty time. But she just leaves me feeling fresh and better, and that's why I wanted to have her on the show is because I know that she'll do that for you guys too. So. I'll let you take it away and introduce yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, hey guys, my name is Avril, like Michelle said, and I own JW Salon, which is in downtown historic Savannah, which is such a beautiful place to have a space. And um, I'm just as equally enamored with you, Michelle, because you're very uplifting. You know, I, I am human. I have so many insecurities and coming in and getting a spray tan, I'm like, oh goodness. And you, you're always just like, you're so beautiful. You're so so wonderful. I'm like, thank you. I shake, I shake the table. Shake um, the table. I'm going to use my hands and we're going to get all jazzy with it. I like it. We both are handsy. So I'm like holding my knee because otherwise no one will be able to hear anything because we're both very handsy when we talk. We have a lot of similarities. I've never done this. So I just shook the table and now I'm going to hold my hands. Oh, you're good. <laughs> It's okay. People will understand. Right. We're all human here. The one thing that we vibe on together yeah. specifically is leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I train on spray tan, I have spray tan partners, but you have how many stylists? So under? in terms of staff, I have 12 people under and, me. And, and then you lead, I mean, she leads in the community in other, in other ways. I mean, yeah. she sure does me. <laughs> but um, I really want you to talk about what leadership means to mm -hmm. you because I know that we share that passion. Yes, it's a huge culture, is a mm -hmm. huge passion of mine. And I did not realize that um, one of the main aspects of culture when you're an owner is to lead. And so that was um, kind of uh, like, Scary. yeah, when that, <laughs> when that came down the line, which I can, I'm happy to go into, yeah. you please, know, please, please. Um, I've been a hairstylist for I think 16 years now and um, owning is something I always wanted to do. Now I'm not going to lie. I thought being an owner or being a boss just meant like, telling people what to do, like just dictating yeah. to people, telling people Same. what to do, bossing people around. I did not have the emotional intelligence or the scope to realize that really leadership is serving others mm -hmm. and it's growing others and it's seeing potential in others. And mm -hmm. um, so when I first bought my business back in May of 2016, so May 1st is my seventh year Heck yeah. owning. So that's... Oh, B10 is a May birthday too. Really? Mm -hmm. So that's so exciting. We got to get together. Yeah. Celebrate. I love what you just said, so I want to keep yeah. going with that because it was so powerful. Yeah. So I bought this business and there were existing employees at the business and I came in and I had my passion and I had my business degree from Kent State University and all my years. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I've got this, you know, yeah. who's not going to want to work for me? I know what stylists want. They want education. They want to feel like they have a happy place to work at. I would call it arrogance and <laughs> ego and pride, <laughs> which every leader has to have. You're doing the oh, best with oh, what uh, you knew and what you yes. had at the moment. Um, and so, um, you know, it started out really well because I was very confident. Mm -hmm. But then as development started to happen, and that's with people, as people mm -hmm. started to happen, because in almost every business you have some person. I mean, if you have a company where it's just you, you're working behind a people, then maybe it's just customers. But any service industry usually has mm -hmm. some form of employees with them. Right. And so those are the people I'm talking about in this case. And as people happen, as their um, their own insecurities, as their own fears, as their own uh, desires and wants, and as all these things started to surface, it was crazy how much I felt like a lack of control happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who desires control. Yes. And so I didn't know what to do with that. I had no coping skills with the... You mean everybody didn't do what you thought they should do? <laughs> I had to think. What would have I? It was 
so funny because I really went into this thinking, well, everyone's going to want to work for me. So it's just finding the clientele. That's going to be the hard part. No. Nope. It's the opposite. Mm-hmm. We found, I found the clientele, but people did not want to work for me. And so what happened is after about a year and a half, I had a walkout. I had a complete salon walkout. You mean everyone walked out? Every I single did not know this. person. Except for the front desk person who the front desk person just was new and, you know, she wasn't a part of it. But every single person had gotten together and conspired and they all planned. Gosh, that makes my heart hurt. Yeah, to walk out. And they all went to the same place. I think all but one went to the same place. And so I am not going to take responsibility for the walkout because that was something that was their choice. They could have chosen to come and talk to me. They could have chosen to. Right quit on their own terms, individually talking to me, seeing Mm -hmm. if there was anything I would do. So I won't take responsibility for the walkout, but I will take responsibility for everything that happened prior to the walkout. Right. Because as I said, I lacked complete coping skills with just all the insecurity that I felt Mm -hmm. as a leader or as an owner. I I was not a leader. Um, And what I did is I brought it all into the salon. So what that means is, I tried to garner sympathy from people. Mm -hmm. Nothing will break down trust faster than Mm -hmm. trying to gain sympathy Mm -hmm. or doing false vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to gain sympathy. I would say things like, well, who knows if we're going to even make it till Christmas who says things like that? But you were I thought, in a very, you were broken. I Well, and honestly, I thought that that would rally the team. <laughs> so it just shows, guys, listen, leadership is a skill. You can be wherever you're at today and you can grow and mm-hmm. you can get better at it. Thank you so much for telling. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. I honestly have never heard anything negative about you. So I. Oh, that's am, nice. Yeah. Thank you. And what nor have I, her? nor have I experienced <laughs> anything negative. So, you know, my perspective has been so positive. Um, but I think you, you get what you put out. And yeah. I have had, since I've met you, I too have had very dr- trouble sometimes in the business prior. Yeah. But, but when I'm around you. You, I have positivity, so I think we just kind of ping that off of each other, like yeah. you know, when uh, with our relationship. But well, and you're not alone. Exactly, like you're not alone, and you're not alone. And I think I felt completely uh-huh. well. I didn't feel like I deserved mm-hmm. to be an owner, and that comes from my childhood, and you know, yeah. the way I was raised. And so, and then I carry that into adulthood. I'm I can release that. <laughs> We were together awesome. Thursday night and I was around her team and her team loves her and mm-hmm. is very supportive. So how did you get from yeah. such a rough place yeah. as a new business owner mm-hmm. and and not as a strong leader to a position of a strong leader in the community and in your, in your business? That's, that's a really great question. Um, and so the way that I got to where I am today is that... I looked at myself. Mm -hmm. So I had a choice. And I won't lie. I cried every day for six Mm -hmm. weeks after the walkout. I never felt more broken than I did in that moment. Yeah. And it was. It was very sad. Uh, I don't like to use this word anymore, but I'm a Christian, but... (laughs) Not like what people know of American Christian. Right. I'm, I have faith in God and um, Jesus Christ. And I um, literally just was like, I am, I am dust right now. So you God, surrender. you have yeah. to make something of me. And every day I'm like, I just want to file for bankruptcy. I just want to file for bankruptcy. Aww. I just, cause I still owed on the business mm-hmm. and um, you wanted to give up. I wanted to give mm-hmm. up. And every day my husband's like, um, I just don't think it's time. I don't think it's time. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for him him Mm -hmm. and for his ability to sit with me as I'm just crying. You know, there's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. I have Mm -hmm. an incredibly, well, my pastor, but my friend, you know, I called him up and he came and he was just with us and he didn't tell me everything was going to be okay. I didn't, I didn't know if everything was going to be okay, but, but every day Mm -hmm. I made it through and I did not give up you know my clients still showed up but it was really brave of you to just surrender that control which is what I struggle with too but when you prayed Mm -hmm. you just surrendered that control and said I I can't do it I need some help and that no matter what your higher power is or where you are connecting spiritually 
and knowing that you don't have to have it all figured out. Well, and that's what I'll tell you guys. No leader has it all figured Mm -mm. out. We aren't leaders because we have it all figured out. We're leaders because we see potential in other people and their ideas, and we have the courage to develop it. Mm -hmm. And so that's from Brene Brown. That's not from me. (laughs) Yeah, and I love that we. I'm also reading right now, like my my go to right now is Gabrielle Bernstein. I love, love, love her. Um, I'll have to write that name down. I, I try to write names of all. I love her. I've got. I'll give you. I've got six of her yes. books on my desk. I'll give you one. Perfect. But um, and but I love that we can read something and it hit us and then share it. And that's why I have this podcast because it's right. a platform to share. You know, all of it. It's not my words, and that's the beauty of sharing and caring and being vulnerable so we can take something so awful and make it beautiful and put it out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what you did in this whole scenario. And, and I, again, I was with her staff on Thursday and they (laughs) adore her. Well, I adore them. They are, they are such good energy and that's a reflection of you. And that's the reflection of our hard work. So Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I've learned with hiring is I look for people who are coachable and self-aware. And I pretty much Mm -hmm. can see it within about six weeks Mm -hmm. if someone is or not. Because there's some hard conversation that has to be had Mm -hmm. when you're a new employee. You're learning. You're growing. Right. And You have to um, be in alignment with the You have to be. Exactly. And so every single person on my team is self-aware and is coachable. Mm -hmm. And... I don't shy away from hard conversations. Mm -hmm. And going into a hard conversation, you're not going to know how that conversation is going to end. But what I choose to do is to look at that person and believe the very best in them, Mm -hmm. go into the hard conversation with whatever I know to be true, and then listen. Mm -hmm. And listen to them and listen to what they're saying, who they are. And then we just keep developing that communication and we walk through it together. Mm -hmm. And then when you come out the other side, you're stronger. So this is a group of people who have walked through so many hard conversations Mm -hmm. because no business, you can't run a business without hard conversations. Like Mm -hmm. it's impossible. There is something that's going to happen. Right. And, um, And each one of them is willing to sit down and say, okay, here's what's going on. Here's what the facts are. Mm -hmm. And the facts are a part, like the emotions are a part of the facts. Mm -hmm. What people are feeling is valid and Mm -hmm. should not be disregarded. Exactly. If you disregard, then you're disregarding the humanness. And that is a women-owned business. Right. Right. (laughs) Um, Well, and you know. It really is. It's, it's, I mean, I'm no man and I, but I've worked in a man's world. Yeah. And it. And now being a female business owner, I, emotions are just as equal as the facts for me. Like, yes, these are people's lives, livelihood. They are with me when they are not with their family. They are doing stuff for my company when they are not doing stuff with their kids, with their dogs. I love, I'm a dog lover. Yeah. And that is very, I take that very seriously. And so, you know, you bring up a man's world, like sadly, we're all trying to rise up in a man's world. I could speak on that for hours. Yeah. Uh, But um, (laughs) (laughs) this is why I love you. (laughs) But what we're talking about is toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many men out there who are leaders. They do lead their employees, they do pour in, they do see the potential and grow Mm -hmm. it. They do speak with emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. They do. And, you know, as someone who does that, you're not going to be in the limelight. Mm -hmm. So we don't always see them. What we see are the people who don't act that way because it's so harmful. And louder. It's louder and it's so harmful to our, to our communities Mm -hmm. and to our our You're country so right. into our world into our cult you know cultures that you we see it because it's breaking people mm-hmm. and so when B Tan started to grow and I think this is just something since you're so vulnerable I'll throw something yeah. out there <laughs> um, as a single woman mm-hmm. I when the business started to take off and I got in the dating world I or I was in the dating world <laughs> I've been in the dating world but m- when the business started to get bigger people started to notice me and recognize the brand and the business I was building I had imposter syndrome I guess that's what they call it and I quickly kind of latched on to a 
successful Mm -hmm. man in the community. And this wasn't my last boyfriend. This was the boyfriend prior to that. It wasn't their fault. I latched on to them because I felt people would take me seriously standing beside this man because I went from bartender to business owner. I put myself in a position where I was not in love. I was not in alignment and I was not connected to this man. In fact, my friends are like, who the hell are you right now? (laughs) Then I still didn't know I was doing that. I did it again. Now this man, I think I very much loved, but I but I still was out of alignment. And a part of me choosing him was I felt like somebody. And now I'll mm-hmm. be damn, I feel like I am healing myself and spending time with myself. And I deserve to take credit for what the hell I've built. And I don't need some mm-hmm. man beside me for this community to make me feel like I'm good enough. But there was some weird... And it was in my head. I no one actually feels that way. It was in, it was a narrative I was playing in my own head, mm-hmm. and I felt more confident. How sad is that? That I well, felt more confident. Safe. You felt safe, right? I felt. Yeah. I really did, and yeah. actually, I was not because I right. was had not put myself in a safe position. So I'm taking it very, very, very seriously. So what I did do, and we'll go into what we did Thursday night. I signed up for everything. I was like, I'm not saying no. I'm going to give back to my community. I am good enough. I'm going to show up in the community. I'm going to show up for my employees. I'm going to show up. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to speak to the world. Give people a voice. I'm going to do Dance with the Stars for the Alzheimer's Association. I'm doing this all. I'm going to spread love to the world and better myself. And I'll be damned, it worked. But I'm tired. (laughs) (laughs) And so Avril and I had a conversation because Avril actually won Dancing with the So I'm doing Dancing with the Stars for Alzheimer's May 20th of this year, 2023. She did Dancing with the Stars for Casa. Yes, for Savannah Casa, Mm -hmm. which is the most... One of Wonderful. the most important it really is. <laughs> nonprofits out there. So go ahead and just Google Savannah Casa I, and go ahead yes. and get yourself Amazed. involved in that. Yes. I am. I'm going to start volunteering. And um, yes, I went to the event. So we went to the event Thursday night. Thursday because night. Avril yeah. was the winner last year. And I. Two years ago. Two years two ago. Years. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, two years ago. And I knew I had heard how great she was. And so when she came to a spray tan, I was like, you got to let me inhale some of that confidence you had because I have heard about it and I'm going into doing this and she I mean gladly was like come with me I'm at the VIP table we're sitting in front because she's a previous winner so she well and so my salon and she, does we donate we the donate hair and donate and sponsor it yeah to, so, yes so um, so she had the ability to give me a seat is what I meant by that <laughs> and I what boy was I was front and center uh, meanwhile oh I had an employee misread the appointment book and somebody was trying to get in my store and I was sitting in front of a lot of like right behind the judges table. I was like, I can't really deal with this right now. Anyway, that was um, business owner. That is business ownership (laughs) right there. That is it at its best right there. (laughs) But she was so sweet to invite me and, and it was good to share that we, I think we both have been through some pretty Mm -hmm. weird times in business and we've been, you know, knocked down and drug around and yeah. by, even by yeah. ourselves too. <laughs> well, and any, um, any, uh, person that delves into leadership is going to get knocked down. I just have to say Brene Brown describes it so beautifully. And yes, I actually think of it yeah, actually, sure. this is, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, um, made this speech mm-hmm. and it's amazing. It's in her book, um, daring greatly. And so, um, He, I can't quote the speech. I don't have the book. I'm sure I could look it up, but I won't, even though I want to so bad. (laughs) So tell us the context of it. So um, he talks about that you're in the arena, okay? Mm -hmm. So imagine a colossal arena that is filled with people, and you are down in the dust. You are sweaty. You are bleeding. You are broken. You are the one that is getting up every day and going in and fighting for what you believe in, mm-hmm. fighting for people, and um, and you're you're just. I mean, like I said, the dust is around you. You could be knocked on your knees. You could be knocked mm-hmm. on your butt, and you get back up. Mm-hmm. And that's what a leader does: is they get back right. up. And then um, you talk about you know the people in the stands and. You have to really choose who you listen to, um, who you listen to as a leader, because the people in stands, Brene talks about it, and I'm going to quote her a lot because I'm very much immersed in her literature right now, but um, she talks about the cheap seats. 
Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to criticize someone who is out there putting themselves out there mm-hmm. because it's safe where you're at. Mm-hmm. But you put yourself out there and you need to know who your people are that mm-hmm. you or you will listen to those voices and not the voices of the cheap seats. It's that's really, such good, that's such it's incredible. Advice. Yeah, And I love the way that you worded it. And it's really where... I'm in the happiest place. So I went through the dr- the trenches. Like yes. I went through you were in the, the separating yeah. myself from um, a person I was dating, which was really hard because there was a lot of love there, to the business was growing. And I was like, I don't deserve this. I am freaking out. Imposter syndrome. Bad. I just want to put a word to that. Imposter syndrome. Bad. I had it bad. I have it. Directors of companies have, have it. it. Yes. The yes. most successful people in the world have it. Yes. And I was going through it and I'm telling you, I just kept going. I kept going and I showed up for myself, but I showed up for others mm-hmm. and I chose love over fear. And that's not something you can just be like, okay, I choose love over fear. I have to wake up and every, every single morning and and throughout the day say, I choose love over fear. I choose love that's over why fear. I love you so much. <laughs> Because that's so brave and so courageous. I'm sorry. Keep going. I just want to hug you, but I I can't because I have all this stuff. Well, this is what we do when she gets spray tanned. (laughs) And this is what I want to be in the world always. It's my true passion. It's what I want to do. And I, this is why you were on here because we resonate on that. And I knew by getting your voice on here, we would. We are going to take a little break because I think both of us just want to (laughs) hug. And then we'll be back. (laughs) Summer is finally here and everyone wants that perfect tan. But why put your skin at risk of sun damage and aging when you can get a gorgeous glow the safe way with Beet Tan? Our organic formula derived from beets gives you a flawless and natural looking tan without any harsh chemicals or UV exposure. Plus, it's fun and easy. And if you want to join the Beat Tan team, we're hiring. We're looking for spray tan technicians and administrative help. Submit your resume to hello at beattan.com and join our fun and exciting team. Have a safe and fabulous summer with Beat Tan. Let's get glowing. Visit us today at beattan.com. And we are back. So I want to get back to, we touched a little on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Um, so I want to get back to that because, I, again, I'm training right now. In fact, I have to train today. And I'm so excited And I you. know that Avril kicked ass when she did. In fact, she won. I so did. let's talk about your experience um, with First that. of all, big shout out to Michael Ferguson, who is the best dancer and choreographer out there. So. Yes. So yeah. him and Sabrina Madison are helping me with mine. So I'm very lucky to have two yes. talents. But and Sabrina is incredibly talented. And they work well. wi- really, really well together. Yeah. So. Um, so Dancing with Savannah Stars is the yearly uh, fun, like big fundraiser for Savannah Casa. And um, and it's incredible. It's so much fun. It is people who get out there and they learn a dance. Sometimes they dance with a professional dancer. Sometimes they dance by themselves. Sometimes they dance with like a one or two friends. But it's really about dancing mm-hmm. and it's about kind of stretching yourself to learn something new. But then you also raise money mm-hmm. for this organization. And I know you're doing it for Alzheimer's, yeah. but I can't wait to see you in your moment on stage being who you are just doing it in dance form. Yes, I'm so I'm our I, and the people that are showing up, I think what's really touched me is yeah. all the people in my community um and in my company that have really shown up for me. When I did my first fundraising event, I it was a bingo game. There were so many people there, they were sitting on the floor. And That's everyone, so cool. I was, I, I was trying to call so Bingo inspiring. when I was teary-eyed, but also in shock because I was like, Bingo. B-12. People were still walking in, and I was like, what the heck? So I'm just – were you just as touched by the people who showed up with the fu- fundraising as they did I, I for was, the party? I had so many people that showed up for me. I didn't raise quite as much money as you have, though, and I think I got really scared to put myself out there. Yeah, I was And scared. so that was <laughs> – yeah, it was so scary for me. I definitely could have done more, and I love hearing how you're doing it. Mm-hmm. I hope to dance again, and, um, and I just want to, like, get – 
I'm you so should ins- do the one for Alzheimer's, and well, I should do the one for that. I, we should- right? <laughs> I'm so ins- inspired about how you said you're saying yes to everything. That is one area that I definitely lack in is that I kind of cocoon myself in my salon and mm-hmm. with my employees um, that I am just now starting to kind of put feelers out into the community. Mm-hmm. And it's very scary. It's very intimidating. And so I'm really like – you know, you help encourage me. And then, you know, my husband helps encourage me. My team helps encourage me. Like there's so many people that do encourage. It's like, it's, it's so much more than dancing. It (laughs) is. It's so much more. And, but when you say you're tired, that's my fear. My fear is being tired. Yeah. And then, well, like what you said earlier, you just keep getting up and showing up. And I don't know, we were really resilient people if you just allow yourself to be resilient and I I will say from my very from my very traumatic childhood I lost my dad really young I have a very resilient I can bounce back I had five stepdads (laughs) I I lost my dad tragically in a car accident my mom was pregnant with my sister when he died oh my gosh Um, and I was three and so I I think that resilience uh you know, I, I, I'm learning where to put it. Yeah. Where before I would put myself in, I would stay in relationships or friendships or, and or say yes to the wrong things. And, yeah. and that resilience was not used in the right direction. Why not use it for giving back to my community by yeah. giving people a voice, um, on a platform like this and, um, and I'm also really silly and funny. So through all of this self work, I just have to say this, through all of this self work I'm doing, I just want to be stupid. I, guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love that you say that because I'm silly it's and been goofy so too. Heavy. It's yes. been a little heavy. And I found myself out the other night and it, it, it was Thursday night, the thing. And I was like, everything was like touching me. I was so emotional. I was like, all right, girl, you got to start freaking laughing again. <laughs> Because everything, I just wanted to hug everyone. I'm like, oh my gosh, am yes. I turning into Jesus? Like, <laughs> Because everything was just so, I was so present with what everyone was saying and yeah. feeling, which is really beautiful. Yes. And then I got home and I was a little exhausted. Oh, oh, it's emotional exhaustion yeah. for sure. Just, and physical exhaustion. Yeah. So I'm like, I we just want to be too. silly and have fun. The podcast I did before this is with my friend Emily. We're drinking tequila because I just, I quit drinking for 60 days. And I was like, you know what? Let's just drink and talk about not drinking. Let's just be silly. So I think with everything that we're doing and we're, yeah. we have to, and you do a good job of that. I have not, she doesn't drink at all Mm-mm. and she is full of laughter and fun and joy. And so that's what I got out of Thursday night. Just watching you <laughs> dance and be so silly without any help. So, I mean, at all, like you, you yeah. were so fun and and joyful to be around. I had a blast. I had so much fun. If you want to see how silly I am, go She's on awesome. my Instagram, Avril Hall, and I just posted a video yes. <laughs> of me singing with the music. I love it. She's the best. <laughs> well, you know, um, my fear is being tired because I'm afraid when I'm tired, I won't be able to cope with the things mm-hmm. I have to cope with daily. And so um, it's funny. I am silly and goofy as well. So I'm very serious, but then I'm also very silly and very okay. goofy. I love to laugh. Mm-hmm. Laughing is my favorite. Um, and you have a great one. Thank you. And uh, and so I want to get on Instagram more and I want to start getting myself Put out that there. that energy out there. Yeah. And, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how to be goofy on Instagram yet. So that's something I'm... I think just be... Don't think about it. All right. I think it'll come more natural to you of all I've been, <laughs> of all people I think just man you know what book you need to read what tell me Steve Harvey jump it just says do it I okay. love that man uh, yeah like I'm really into reading female books but Steve oh, Harvey absolutely. just does something to myself yes. I love that man no I love I mean, that not in like a sexual way sorry Steve Harvey <laughs> but, um I don't think you'll mind I don't <laughs> Um, but like he really like speaks to he he I like the way he speaks and his book I'm um, reading the one of his success um, think like success now but I read jump and there it's a really good book for okay, like yeah I doing, feel like I need to for read just it. doing yeah doing it and I think even something as simple as like being funny on social media I think you wouldn't I mean. When I'm silly on social media, people are always like, girl, look at you being you. Like, people appreciate yeah, me being an idiot. And I actually appreciate me being an idiot, too. 
Well, and you're not being an idiot. You're being joyful and you're loving life and you're um, expressing like your inner joyness with your soul. It's and so imperfections. Beautiful. Like I can well, no human make is mistakes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> and well, I can talk about them on social media. And that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> that's so cool because whatever mistake you made, there's mm-hmm. thousands of people out there that have made the same, same mistake. Same mistake. You're and so we right. all feel like we're alone in our mistakes. Okay. So let's go back now that we're wrapping up and coming to the end yeah. of this wonderful episode and interview. I don't feel like it was an interview at all. It's just a <laughs> conversation I always have with you. Right. Also, <laughs> we just happen to have microphones. It's always in front wonderful. Of us. <laughs> um, I want to go back to the original. Um, you gave such a wonderful, vulnerable story about your business and something that happened to you that not a lot of people would have the courage to say, Mm -hmm. you know, on a podcast or to anyone. Um, Let's go back to that and talk a little bit more about the other side of that experience. Once you, once you dealt with everything you needed to deal with and, um, you know, what led to becoming like what happened to led to this great Um, leader sitting with me. Right to where I am today, which I still have. I will be growing every day for the yeah, rest same. of my life. I still had, like, I hired immediately, and I was still hiring the wrong person. Mm-hmm. And it's like I knew it now, though. Like, mm-hmm. I, I recognized that they weren't the right people, and so I started to delve into that. And then finally, it's like I got one good person who mm-hmm. was really strong and could help me be more mm-hmm. strong in that moment. And then I got another good person. Mm-hmm. And then I got another good person. Mm-hmm. And then I got a not-so-great person. Mm-hmm. And, but then this time, instead of, um, you know, when I had these, like, fears and insecurities, I would go home and I would think about them and I would mm-hmm. put words to them and I would try and Love read that. something on them. I would not just push them down or push them and away. And it's not like nothing, anything's wrong with you or them. It's just a, out of an alignment. They're not in yeah. alignment with what you desire my for values. your business. Yes. I just yeah, hit my, my face values. on the mic, but that's, that's okay. I did it earlier. Yeah. It. We just can't not do it. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes people don't like it. And it's like, yeah. no one has to walk away with guns ablaze and like it. Well, and here's what I will true to yourself in your business. Yeah. Well, and so one of the saddest moments I had of becoming an owner was realizing that in certain people's stories, I'm the villain. Mm-hmm. And that's just going to happen sometimes, yeah. especially when I don't have hard conversations right away. Mm-hmm. Um, there was someone that I hired, and within four weeks, I knew. I was like, mm-hmm. ooh, this is a red flag. But I kept letting it go, mm-hmm. and then a year and a half later, we split, and there's just – it's not – uh, uh, it's not a positive split. It's, right. a, it's, you know, it's a very traumatic split. And mm-hmm. so anyways, um, you know, I was still kind of doing things like I would stick my head in the sand when like mm-hmm. a hard conversation had to happen. And that's one of that. You just don't ever want to do that. Mm-hmm. A conversation never gets easier. It only gets harder. So if you just, um, tackle it right away, then it's you're able to walk through it. But I hadn't really developed the trust. You know, mm-hmm. I had these good employees coming in, but I wasn't, I didn't know how to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and build trust. And so that's what I have been working on slowly. And then I was introduced to Brene Brown's work. And I have a book over here. That's why I'm pointing over here. But um, I was introduced to her work. And her work is the... It's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. I I, I highly up. recommend. Um, I think every owner needs to read Dare to Lead. You'll be blown away. Mm-hmm. And um, and so, I just slowly started working on things, and by the grace of God, mm-hmm. um, it has grown and evolved to where now I have. I am now doing leadership courses. With my team, so there's six seminars. Cool. And I do. I work with three people at a time, mm-hmm. and we work through the Dare to Lead uh, book and the workbook. And it's been life giving for not just me, but for my team. And I'm also seeing the way my team is growing in their lives. You know, they're working for me, and I've just seen them evolve from like they're getting married, they're buying homes, they're taking yeah. these bucket list vacations, they're saving money, they're, you know, my business is not the wealthiest business in the world, I'm not the wealthiest person in the world, but my 
my team seems to be flourishing and we have seasons where it's really hard, but um, they're having babies, they're taking maternity leave, they're coming back, they're still coming back to like a strong clientele. My goal is to have employees, stylists behind the chair working 32 to 34 hours a week making six figures and that is happening. That's amazing. Yeah, and it's because they are working smarter not harder. Mm-hmm. They are coachable. We have we have one on one meetings every month. Love that. I have team meetings every month. Um, I have a business coach. I have a finance coach. Mm-hmm. I have a therapist. Um, same, same. <laughs> get yourself same. a good therapist. And I just started. So how long ago did you start doing it? I just started doing this in January. So, therapy. Well, therapy and. The business coach. So my business coach I got in 2017, my finance coach I got in 2018 after the walkout. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I've been getting therapy since I was in college. I luckily had the forethought to start. I started therapy end of last year, October of last year. And then the the coaching, the life and business coaching has just started in January. In fact, I just graduated my first and continued Congratulations. Thank you. But That's you know huge. what? I didn't know that you did that. That's what's so crazy. I've always yeah. felt like this connection with you. And here we are, you know, m- making similar decisions. And mm-hmm. I can see, you know, how special your staff is yeah. and how how much that it was like being with sisters. I don't know. It was like a very yeah. family vibe. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you care enough to do a leadership program within the business Mm -hmm. is amazing. I was sharing, I've been sharing things like crazy and my team's getting closer and closer. And, you know, I mentor these business owners, these spray tan gals that have their own women, that have their own business. And I take it very, very seriously. So that's where, you know, I'm just, as we close, that's where Avril and I, that's where we connect. That's where we align. And that's why I wanted to have her on. And I want to have her on again because I know there's so much more to be said. Yeah. Um, and I do know from past guests that will listen to it and then be like, man, I wish I would have said that. Right. So when you do listen to it, take it. And then anyone out there who has more questions or yes. was touched by this, please DM me or Avril. Yeah. Uh, mine is B goes on podcast um, on Instagram. And then what's yours? Mine is Avril Hall. It's just A, V as in Victor, E R I L H U L L. Or JW Salon, also mm-hmm. both good Instagram accounts. You can DM on both of them. I would love any questions, right. any conversations, anyone who wants to get coffee. We'd love to serve. I, yeah, I we love, really do. I love just connecting. Yeah. I love people. Well, I love you and thank <laughs> you so, you. so much for coming on. You're such a, I love it. We're going to have you back on. I love you so much. Thank you. Thanks guys.